G'day again. Question 5. Given that z equals 1 minus i, which expression is equal to z cubed? And they give you a bunch of answers. Notice the difference. These two are your only two choices that are repeated there for distance, and these two are your only two choices for your angle. Okay, so you really don't have too much to figure out. To start with, let's cube it. So you've got 1 minus i, we'll square it first, multiply by 1 minus i, pretty simple. 1 times 1, 1, 1 times minus i, minus i, another 1, minus times a minus is a plus, i times i is i squared, pretty straightforward. Um, plus minus i squared, okay well that is minus 1, 1 minus 1, nothing it's gone, minus i minus i, so that equals minus 2i. So that squared is minus 2i. First step. Next step, multiply again by 1 minus i. Minus 2i times 1, well that's pretty easy, minus 2i. Minus times a minus is a plus, so we've got 2i squared. Well what's i squared? Minus 1, so wipe that out, wipe that out, put a minus. Rewrite it backwards so it looks neat. Minus 2, minus 2i. Usually you write the number before the i. Just standard procedure. Um, to figure out this, I just graph it. So let's just do that. There's x, and there's i, y. Okay. Just remember, your 0 degrees starts there. And this is 180 degrees. What's 180 degrees? It's pi. Okay? Need to, need to remember that. Minus 2, minus 2i. So, fairly easy. If that's minus 2, and that's minus 2, your point's going to go there, and you're going to go back to 0. So that's your distance. This is your distance. That's your distance. How long is that? Pretty straightforward. A little bit of Pythagoras in your head, and you can figure that out. 2 squared plus 2 squared. So the square root. 2 squared plus 2 squared. Well, that's the square root of 8. 4 plus 4 is 8. Simplify that, and you should have done that a few times. Equals 2 root 2. So that is your length, or your distance there, that we're looking at here. So this is what we want. So that one and that one are out. We're looking for either B or D. Okay, second step. This is the angle. So the next thing we want to do, what's the angle from here? So this is zero. So usually you get it in this way, but it's down here. So this is negative. Okay, we're looking at a negative angle because this is going from zero to negative 180, even though it's still positive 180. You can consider that to 360. You're going negative three quarters. So that's a half. Three quarters, you know that's 45, and that's 45, it's pretty obvious from the diagram. So this is going to be three quarters pi on four, and it's negative because we're going that way. So we're looking for negative three quarters on four. So your answer is B, and you're done. G'day again, question six. Which expression is equal to x squared, or the integral of x squared sine x dx? Okay, for this one, you've got two things that you know you can't integrate just simply, and it's extension 2, so it's going to be integration by parts. So whether you've learned v to u or u to v doesn't really matter, as long as you get them in the right order. So I typically have v u dash equals, and then v u minus integrate um, u v dash. So as long as they're the opposites, okay, you could rewrite this as u v dash equals, and as long as then this one would have to be a u dash, then you're okay. So it doesn't really matter which way you've learned it, as long as you remember there's one dash there and the opposite dash is in there. And either way, this one is going to be integrated there and there. Okay? So let's look at this, and we'll put that over here. We want to have, that's the integral. So we're going to go x squared sine x, and I'm going to call that v, and I'm going to call that u dash. Okay? So, here we go. v 
VU. So we want to have V, which is X squared, U. So I'm going to integrate sine X. Integrate sine X and you get minus cos X. So that's X squared multiplied by minus cos X. Okay? Minus in integral of U. So what's U? Well, I'm going to integrate this and get minus cos X. Okay, I'll put that in brackets to keep that minus together. And then we have V dash, so that was V. Differentiate that, we get 2X. So multiply by 2X. Clean that up a little bit. So we're going to get equals minus X squared cos X. Minus minus is a plus. Plus, usually write the 2X in front. 2X cos X dx. And which one looks like that? A, B, C. I'm going to go for C. So you're done. G'day again. Question 7. The numbers 1, 2, up to n, for n greater than 4, or, or equal to 4, are randomly arranged in a row. What is the probability that the number 1 is somewhere to the left of the number 2. This would have to be one of the strangest questions they've thrown in there because there's no real formula that I can think of that you would do, that you would tend to use for this. Uh, it's really just a plain thinking question. So while I thought question 3 was the easiest, I'm starting to think that question 7 might be the easiest. If you just think about, for example, the numbers 1 and 2, and forget about n greater than 4, greater than or equal to 4, how many ways can you arrange 1 and 2 if there's two numbers, or well, those two, how many times is 1 to the left of 2? Well, 1 out of 2 times, right? So a half. Let's do it with 3 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, um, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, uh, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. How many times is 1 to the left of 2? Well, 1's on the left there. 1's on the left there. No, no. 1's on the left there. No. Look at that. 1, 2, 3 out of 6. <laughs> a half. And guess what happens if you do it a fourth time, a fifth time? It's always going to be logically half the time on this side and half the time on that side. So your answer is A. It's a, a very strange question. Uh, there may be another way to do it, but that's just a logic question in my books. G'day again. Question 8. The graph of the function y equals fx is shown, and they show you this diagram. The second graph is obtained from the function y equals fx, and they give you that diagram. Which equation best represents the second graph? And gives you a, a bunch of choices. Uh, I think this is a fairly difficult question and I would do it by elimination. Uh, I, I'll tell you what I think or how I would think in the exam and then I'll do some corrections. I've actually checked a few of the graphs on Wolfram. So let's see how we go. So the y squared equals absolute value of fx. If I was thinking about this in the exam, I would tend to think, okay, absolute value, so I want the absolute value answer of each of these and I've got to have a y squared so I'm going to get a positive and negative answer. Okay, so I would tend to think, okay, this thing going up here is probably also going to go down here and this thing going over here, whoops, this thing going over here, down here, is also going to go down there because because of this y squared of absolute value, this is going to be positive, so you're going to get a positive answer and then you're going to find two values, a positive and a negative y for each of it. So I'm tending to think you'll get a graph like that. So A would be wrong. And that would be my thinking on that. Y squared equals fx. Well, this is actually the answer. So I'm just going to go through and knock out these ones because I would get here and go, this looks okay. What about these? And I would do it by elimination. So jumping down to here, let's go to D y equals f of the square root of x. So that means that if you put 
instead of putting that x in, you're actually putting a smaller value of x in each of them. So I'm thinking, well, the equation's probably going to shift like smaller, like that. I would probably each of these values, which after three, instead of putting in let's say 10, you're putting in a smaller value. So I'm tending to think that the graph is sort of going to go like this. I'm not sure about what's going to happen here, but um, if you've, you've got the square root, you're tending to have smaller values like, you know, like, like that or something like that. So that would wipe out D for me because I'm just tending to think it's, well, it's going to sort of shrink the graph in that sort of thing. So I don't think that's correct. That would leave me with these two, and that would raise my suspicion because they're virtually identical. If you look at them, you've got y squared equals fx, and you've got y equals the square root of fx, and I would think, okay, it's got to be one of those. That's, that's very obvious. Okay? Uh, so if you look at root fx, are we going to square root the whole lot of your answer? So each answer, so this is c, so that was a and d, this is C, I'm going to square root everything. So if I go here on this side, I'm square rooting this, so that tends to, to do this thing like that, and I'm going, okay, well that does match that, and I thought, okay, that looks pretty good because they're getting smaller and that's a sort of a square root shape. The other thing, just think about it, what does this graph look like? Well, if you turn it up, it actually looks like a parabola on its side. So a normal parabola, y equals x squared, looks like that, if you go x squared plus 1 or something, turn it on its side and you're going to have x equals y squared plus 1, or plus something or other, okay? So this is tending to look like half a parabola, and so it's saying, well no, this is tending to look like, more like the full parabola, okay? Not quite, because I actually looked this up and tried to figure out, okay, what would this equation look like? And I just made up some numbers. This has got to be a double root, and this has got to be a single root. So I just went, okay, well, let's make that one and make that three. And so you would have y equals uh, x minus one, that's a double root, and x minus three. And so that could be that equation if you actually drew it like that if that was 1 and that was 3. And then what I tried to do in my head was go through each of these, which is very, very difficult to get this to equal this. But if you do punch that into Wolfram and you do make this squared, it actually does turn out to be that. Okay, it does, it does turn into, into that graph. But my logic in the exam wouldn't be, you know, how can I calculate this? Because that's a lot of work in an exam. My logic would be thinking, Okay, that's a square root, so it can only go positive. That's a squared. It's the most likely one to be the side on parabola. And that's how I do it.